Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to talk about the node async await mechanism for writing asynchronous code in a synchronous looking way. This new async await mechanism is essentially synthetic sugar on top of promises, but as we will see in this lesson, it makes it super convenient to write asynchronous code. What we have here as starting point for this lesson is the crypto random bytes API in a promise form. So with this in place, let's use this to create the user session. We are going to export this constant so that it's available also here in the create user route file. And the way that we could try to use this initially is after first creating here the user, we are going to then create also here the session. So we could try something like this. We are going to define here a constant which is a session ID and we are going to call this function here random bytes and we are going to generate here our session ID. In order to do so, we are going to have to import here the random bytes function and we need to pass in here the number of bytes that we need. Let's say that we are going to create a session with 32 bytes. Notice that the result of calling random bytes gave us back a promise, so it did not give us back the result of evaluating that promise. So in order to do that, we are going to be using the TypeScript await keyword. So what the await keyword would do would be to take the result of evaluating this promise here. So the result would be the session ID and we would be able to assign it here to this constant. But we have here a problem. Notice the error message. It says that await is only allowed within an async function. Now, just to see that this would work, we could create here an anonymous inline function. So let's do that. We are going to create here a self-evaluated function and we're going to apply it here the async keyword so if we would move here this call to await inside of it now we would not get back the compilation error so this would work sometimes we need this trick but in general what we want to do is instead we want to refactor this code so that this all happens inside a function that is annotated with the async keyword so that we can use async await everywhere and have a more synchronous looking code. So we are already using here another promise for calculating the password digest. Let's instead refactor everything. We are going to create here a new function. We are going to add it here the async keyword in the beginning. We are going to call it simply create the user and the session. And inside this function, we are going to do all the operations needed for creating the user and creating the password digest as well. So let's see how we could create the password digest using the async await syntax. Again, we are going to define here a constant. We are going to call it simply password digest and we are going to assign it the result of calling here argon2 hash. So the result would be a promise here. We will need to pass in here the credentials here to this function. So the result of calling this hash function would be a promise. But again, if we apply here a wait, this is going to resolve the promise and assign to this constant the result. Because the function is a sync, we don't get here this error. So now in the next line and without creating here a second level of indentation, we are going to be able to continue our program. So this effectively solves the callback problem. We are going to be able to create the user here on the next line. We're going to log it here to the console. Here we have the session. We are going to need to store the session somewhere on the server memory. And we can actually complete here the result of creating the user by uh, calling the response with the status 200 and sending back the user data. For that, we are going to be needing the response that is going to be the first argument passed on to this function. So we can remove here everything in the else clause. And here is what we are going to do. We are going to call the function that we have here, create user and session. And we are going to pass it in the response and the credentials. So the function now has everything that it needs to create the user. We're going to log also here 
to the console. We're going to log here the session ID that we just created. Let's just see this in action to see that everything is working correctly. We are logging the session ID as expected. Also, this session ID here is not yet a string. We need to convert it into a string. So in order to do that, we are going to add here a then block. We are going to take here the bytes that were generated and we are going to call to string on the bytes. We are going to say that we want a string in the X format. Now let's also remove here this uh, logging that we had copy pasted here in order to avoid duplicate logging because we are also logging everything here at the create user method. So you might notice that the create user is slightly different than the version that we implemented before. There is just here some extra logic for testing if there are duplicate users with the same email. But other than that, everything is very similar to what we had. And at this point, we have here an async function that is returning a promise and is being called here. And the result is not being assigned to anything. So we might expect that when we run the server at this stage, that we would not get anything created at the level of the database. Let's see if that is the case. We have now here a server running. Let's see what is the current behavior of the application. We are going to refresh here the application. We will head over to the sign up screen and let's create here a new user. After entering twice the password, let's see what shows up here on the server log. We click sign up. So as we can see, even though the result of calling the async function will return a promise, this code here was still executed despite of that. This might be a bit surprising, but it's the normal behavior of promises. When we create a promise, it's going to be either resolved or rejected. This is unlike the behavior of observables, where we have to subscribe to the observable in order to trigger it. Here with promises, we don't need to do that. So we could imagine that we would have here a then block associated to this promise that was assigned here an empty function. So if we would come across this inside our program, it would be much more apparent that indeed this code here would have been executed. So we are going to be using this normal syntax instead. And at this point, we have the session ID created and we know how to use the async await functionality with node. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to store the session ID in memory on the server so that we can later retrieve it. We are going to associate the session ID to a given user and we are going to somehow link the session ID to the HTTP request so that subsequent requests by the same user are going to be linked to the session ID. Let's see how we're going to do that in a safe way. 